Wait, you want to just continue on without break because the the probably the the down of your your mental state comes after you've had a little bit of rest. If you don't rest, adrenaline will keep pumping and then you will just keep going. Through that. There you go. Parasympathetic so, nervous system, dog. I, I think a lot of teams like to, they actually like to pack multiple officials in the same day. They like to have scrim yeah. days and officials. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rather to have one break day completely free than to have a couple of games uh, happening. Anyway, in the meantime, uh, we are soon starting the draft. Oh. So uh, we can talk a little bit about what we're expecting to see in terms of heroes. In terms of, I mean, Jakiro mid will probably not happen again, I would imagine. So they, it's interesting the why that happened. Uh, they had opened, they opened clock Jakiro and they had done that in a previous game. Uh, and it was Biver that played the, the Jakiro in that one. What happened in, that, in the Empire game was they opened clock Jakiro and yeah. Empire second picked TA uh, sorry, second phase picked TA into it. And so they put the Jakiro mid against the TA. There's, there really are only a couple of heroes. TA and Dragon Knight are the main two that come to mind that you would want to put Jakiro mid against. Remaining. It worked out for them. We'll see if, uh, if that opening happens again. Uh, we have some people waiting in the war room to talk you through the strategies. Oh yeah. yeah. What a fog. Oh yeah, and look what's behind my back. Oh! 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 I actually just knew it. I just knew it. Damn. Scripted. Nice. Alright. That's all I had though. I don't know what the hell else. The other hero I was going to grab his band, so... Alright. Let's go. Let's continue with that. That was great. That actually worked out perfectly. No, it was really good. You shouldn't be so surprised about that. You should play it off as if it was, you know, obviously, you know, confidence. Just another day for Emperor. Oh, I was going to grab that one too. I'm actually triggered. Oh, keep it. Alright, so Bristol. That's unusual. Nice. We're gonna no, that'll probably be over there, right? And there's gonna be aggressive. I think that's gonna be aggro. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll put that over there for now. So we've got the GH, keep it alight, and the mind control probably on the bristle back. I think bristle's coming back into the into the meta a lot. Saw him at Kiev, Weha with that absurd. Well, he was like 18 and zero that one game that he did play. Oh, and we've seen it a yeah. couple times since then. Just very strong hero that naturally builds solar crest, pressures a lot, and farms ancient stacks and can take Roche. He does a lot of things. He's objective taker as well. Just in general, a good hero now. Yeah, I, I think that's the big key to this open is that you, you get away with this bristle coddle open because yep. they can play in all three lanes depending on the matchup and, and they can put a lot of pressure. Uh, there aren't too many matchups that just crush them and there are a lot of matchups that they really, really punish. Uh, this is very, very stock Navi recently. I think they've done this in either nine or all 10 out of the last 10 drafts. They've often, they've opened offline support. Uh, a lot of the CIS teams have actually been opening Darkseer Slardar, Darkseer Disruptor, uh, very similar. A lot of team fight potential. Pretty flexible leaning. Mm. I, I do worry a little bit. Uh, the Disruptor as a support, we all know, pretty vulnerable to being punished in the laning phase. And that, that uh, Coddle Bristle dual lane is a lane that can just, if Disruptor is put with a carry that he needs to babysit, they can just get run at. Sure. Yeah. I think we might see some dodging come out, possibly from Navi. I mean, it's very early to say that, but... If they do get like vision of where the Coddle Bristle are going, we might see the Darks are even put down there with a combo rather than having their carry placed up against that because it's just too much harassment. The double quills start to add up too much. Yeah, the Chakra. Do you guys think we'll see another Weaver? We've been seeing a lot of Weavers against Disruptors lately, which is uh, a little counterintuitive to me, but I guess it's that early game aggression that we were talking about, huh? I mean, it's always a possibility. It's a okay. Safe bet. <laughs> Thank you. Metumum, that's a. I, I believe that's a combo that Liquid went to in Kiev. The Metumum and Weaver. I think that's a good. Uh, Ten seconds. It's a good sort of tempo carry. Again, I've, I've been using that phrase a lot, but I feel like a lot of teams are going to that with the mids farming up yeah. and the carries applying pressure throughout the mid game, and that's just the. It's a style of play and a style of hero that Metumum is very, very comfortable with. I still want to see. I want to see more of his Lycan. I feel like his Lycan is still really good. First but, yeah. phase ban for yeah. that oh. very reason. Yeah. I think, look, I always think about Matu and I think, yeah, Lycan, and I think his Terra Blade. I, I, mm -hmm. I was so confused yeah. at Kiev when they weren't grabbing Terra Blade all these, all these times because playing with Miracle in pubs, playing with Matu in pubs, those guys pick Terra Blade like half of their games. And they're experts on the hero. They know exactly their timings and when to choose the fights. So I think, I think it's still a possibility this game that they can grab it because they do have the, st the stall mechanic from the Coddle. They have the mid game from the Bristleback and then... I think it terribly can fit in, but they do need some disable to follow that up. I so. mean, they they have but also been picking Naga for uh, Matuma. Mm -hmm. well, when they GH, 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 well, GH is normally the keeper of the light oh. player, and the last time they did pick Naga, they kept uh, Matuma on the on the Naga Siren. Yes. So, 
I would imagine that they are going to stick with that if they're going to pick that again. Kuro's, uh, Kuro has played plenty of Coddle in his career, but yeah, that's, that's yeah. true yeah. that you generally put GH on it these days. Uh, and the Terrorblade does end up getting banned out, so yeah. uh, they, uh, they read your mind in that one as well. Yeah, that, that's a super good point by Fog, because uh, Terrorblade was, was very, very good at Kiev overall. I think he was like yeah. 14 and 6. So that hero had a very good tournament. It was surprising to see Liquid not go that direction. So what are we looking for for here? Because in terms of bands, we obviously got a couple of carries banned out, but we also have the Slaughter and the Tusk move. So you got those aggressive four positions. Yep. Which aggressive four positions are still in that we could see come out here? Because we already talked yesterday about Earth Spirit not being super hot anymore. Could see the Tusk. Ah, uh, could, well, no, banned. that's banned. Okay. So we can't see that. Uh, y I mean, you always have to at least think about the Seneco Bounty Hunter. Yeah. Or Ricky can then comes to mind as well, of course, uh, somewhat interchangeable in a way. I'd like Liquid to have some kind of stun, like some Sand King yeah. or something, yeah. if possible. But Sand King has a four position. I'm normally not too excited about that. Oh, it I, just I, takes so long. It's, you, see it's, you see it still a lot uh, in the Chinese team. Like yeah. Kaka does it amazingly yeah. well still. But yeah, not as much among the Western teams. Yeah, it's definitely much more rare here. I just, yeah. Yeah, I just really like having that kind of catch and disable when you have like, these two heroes already showing. And you're playing versus Darkseer and Disruptor. They, I mean, Navi could even still be grabbing the Sanking for themselves. So I feel like Liquid, if they take it, could be kind of a deny pick. But we'll see the kind of approach they want to do. I think GH and Kuro both play the Coddle. That's why I'm like leaving options open. Oh, they do go okay. for the Rubik, though. So that's Navi's probably Kuroki's hero. Kuroki's Rubik. Yeah. It's one of, the, one of the top five most played player yep. hero combinations in all of Dota. What? Behind uh, Kuro Rubik. Oh. Yeah. Behind Bulldog's Nature's Prophet. That's number one. And Aki's Chen. It's wow. Good sustainable disable. I mean, of course, it's just like a single target one other than the lift stun, but it's, uh, it gives you the no field later on, which works really well versus these Dark Seer Disruptor kind of combos. Usually you want either like a BKB core to kind of deal with that, or, I mean, this can help a little bit with, versus it. And also it's more deep push. So now they have Coddle Rubik for deep push, which is pretty oh. ridiculous. So now this is an old school oh. kind of thing that, well, not old school, but people tend to like picking Night Stalker a lot versus Keep the Light, just the vision game. Yeah. But I think it also, you know, now you're glad as Navi that you ban Lycan because I think one of the things that teams have started to look for with the NS counter to the Coddle is you saw EG do this at Kiev. You then pick up Lycan to take advantage Five of the double howl remaining. at nighttime mm -hmm. provided by Darkness. But banned out, not going to happen here. Five. Yep. You know, I like the concept of uh, the Night Stalker in this game. I mean, great long silence against, Ru against Rubik. Very good against Coddle as well. Yep. However, it's been a long time since I've ever watched a game with a Night Stalker and been like, whew, thank goodness they had him. I mean, it's, it's, I don't think he's that good of a hero, honestly, in this current meta. He can, he can go crazy, though. What, was yes. it, wasn't it Lil at Kiev when he had that one game as Night Stalker where he got like a six-minute medallion and we just yep. every single gank worked out for him? It works well with Darkseer, too, because how hard you can pressure. And like you mentioned, Slack, Coddle and Rubik, they're susceptible to that kind of like four-minute four minute nighttime gank. Night Stalker just goes, and these two can't really respond first as him that well because he's innately so tanky, he can just kind of run into towers. Oh, my goodness. So, so okay, I, that's going to be a carry bristle. It's going to be a, save, it's gonna be uh, a Matu bristle. Matu bristle, yeah. and this is going to be a mind control doom. They yeah. picked this at Kiev a lot. Don't like, but don't you just like insta Wraith King here? Wraith King. I, I like Wraith King a lot versus I mean, him, it, but he, Coddle's good versus him too. Yeah, that's true. Until that's true. Monolik, Monolik really, really messes him up. But anytime I see a Doom or, or for that matter, a Legion on board, that's immediately what I think about. The, there's not that much synergy though with the Wraith King and the, the rest of the Navi heroes, they. I mean, they got a lot of actually, control to, and catch to allow the Wraith King to punch into people. I guess you can surge I, and all that. I actually really like it with, uh, with the AoE team fighters like the Dark Seer and Disruptor because the Wraith yeah, King goes slow. in first, yeah. they focus him, you get the reincarnation, slow down, yeah. and then I guess, yeah. Yeah, drop I can see the that wombo work. combo on top of it. Yeah, you're right with that. But uh, they may be thinking something totally different. I don't want to talk too much about that. But what if you're right, though? Eh. Eh. <laughs> it's bound to happen by accident, right? <laughs> Damn. No, I think other other directions. Uh, you still do need some. You need you need some tower hitters as Navi. You need some physical damage. Mm. They don't see the see mid yet. So. The prophet. I don't know what happened in this here. I, he started coming back in Kiev, and now no one picks him anymore. Nobody like him. Makes me sad. Wait, which it, one? Ninja prophet. Ninja prophet. Yeah, Ninja's prophet. yeah I, I agree though, because the games that we did see him in. Actually, DP is pretty was good. Very strong. Yeah, that's why I heard prophet. I was like, oh. So they pick Lena. They just kind of like now they have their combo. I mean, this is 
CIS, we've been saying a lot about, you know, the CIS game, the Gambit, whatever you want to call it, but they do have that kind of Wombo combo thing. And Lena... Hey, no, super no, strong no, no, wait. The CIS Gambit is opening with the Dark Sea or Slaughter. Dark, yeah, but... No, it's a Dark it's the same, it's same you idea, can't though. change that up. We, may, we gave it a name. This is the... This, you think of the Borscht right. Brawler. This is a Borscht Brawler. I mean, are you, are you guys liking Lena here, though? No, because you're, you've got two cores, a Bristleback and a Doom, that are going to have a lot of HP. There's a, a null field that's going to come into play. I mean, I, I kind of feel it could get to the point where if Alina doesn't start to just dominate the game from the start, yep. it's going to be pretty little. I mean, it, as soon as that Bristle gets a few iron, they're not... This is a game already where I'm looking at the damage that Na'Vi have. Uh, if this Bristle has a good start at the time, which he should do, because he is a safe lane Bristle, they're, they're not going to be able to bring him down. And if Mind Control gets good farm on the Doom as well, he's going to be very hard to bring out as well. I think right. they're probably thinking, like, we don't get last pick anyway, so we may as well reveal our mid right now, because okay. Liquid gets the last pick on us either way. So yeah. it's just like, okay, we get a very strong mid laner. We don't have to worry. It's like, okay, if Miracle gets, like, Invoker, Ember, or something like this, we at least have this Lena versus it no matter what. I think you actually, you're both dead along with that. I, I, I think that Fog's point is very correct, that you pick Lena there because there really aren't too many mid matchups that can really punish it. Yeah. That does not invalidate, though, anything that OD said. Yeah, I think no, that's I agree. perfectly correct. Like, uh, this is, it's a very sort of stock draft by Navi here. And I don't know that they're going to be able, I don't know that they're going to be able to dictate tempo enough to force those team oh, fights. With, oh, there you go. They're going to okay. nauger it. So they are, they are potentially going to play for the late game now, which is, as we know, an area that Liquid's looked a little spotty. I like it a lot more now. Yeah. But they do need to get to the late game, and I think that might be a tricky part. Yeah, they, they, do they have enough damage to take down a Bristleback, for example, to Liquid stop him from going high ground? The the other thing is that that Navi's base armor really getting, high, oh, really oh, really oh, very oh, good oh, against the Bristleback. Uh, this is a very hard game for Navi, I think. Yeah. Miracle Invoker. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thanks, know. gents. Uh, over to the commentating desk with you while we discuss who we think has the better draft. Now, I will go first and say that I think. It should never go up against a Miracle Invoker. That's just... No, I just I think know, Liquid guys. is going to take this one. Good effort, good effort, yeah. I can, I can see that. What are you thinking? I, I think there's a very good... Look, I think there's a very good chance that Liquid just go out, and if they get ahead early, they just end the game at 30, 35 minutes, yeah. and it looks like a stomp. I think if this game goes to 50 minutes, like, Liquid are in serious trouble. So I, I, I will... I'll take Liquid, but this is not, to me, a lopsided draft. All right, all right. Got to disagree with you there, Alan. I feel like uh, Navi has certainly got the upper hand in this one. A lot of aggression and a lot of ways that they'll be able to handle uh, all that stuff. Hey, Liquid doesn't have that much, really, to be able to deal with their team. Where's the control, Alan? They just don't have it. No, I asked Liquid. I had Liquid. Too bad, Shiver, you're with me. Shiver, you with me. Oh, uh, I'm both. Okay. There Welcome to the ride, milady. Two for two. Two for two. Ha ha. Ha ha. <laughs> oh, wow. A well, tip of the fedora. Is it going to be a long game, or are we actually going to see uh, Liquid dominate Navi in the early game and just take it over for the first game? We're going to find out. Over to our commentators, Fogged and Odie Pixel. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and indeed, welcome and get yourselves ready for game one of the day. Now, we are going up against the boys from Liquid. We've just seen the drafts, uh, as the panel has said, maybe a, a little worried for, for Na'Vi in this one, but they have got this pie cut Naga. Maybe they, maybe they can Naga it up and, and win with the Siren. I think it's possible, yeah. Um, I think Seneko's going to have to have a very good early game to kind of like yeah. set the tempo for them, because if Liquid comes out good in these lanes, I think it's going to be, like the panel was saying, I think it's going to be very tough for Na'Vi to kind of come back. So first nighttime rotation is going to be very important for Na'Vi coming into this one. See how Liquid decides to put their pressure. It looks like they are going for an aggro tri lane. They're going to be putting Dooms in the safe lane 1v1 versus the Darkseer. You can eat the Ion Shell creep if you want to, and then or you can have like a sustained creep if you find one of those big satyrs. It's not that bad of a matchup for the Doom. And yeah, this is a good approach. We used to talk about that a lot versus Naga Siren. Best way to mm -hmm. start out versus her is just put a lot of pressure right away, and that's what they're doing. Boots, okay. Rubik, Coddle, and Bristleback aggressive. And yeah, I mean, if, if you're Na'Vi, do you do you have to move the Naga away from this, or do you, do you just have to deal with it? You, could we see them try and move, or, or are Liquid always going to mirror what you do? I think that they should probably dodge. I think they should very, try and dodge, yeah? Yeah, I think it's going to be a bit difficult. I think even okay. potentially putting... I don't know, I think even having like the Naga mid isn't so bad, and then yeah. having like even like the Lina in the tri lane, or even just throw the Darkseer down I mean, there. Like I mean, that, that is the thing, yeah, you actually bang on there, because right. Naga mid was one of the, the 
ways we saw people win lanes against the Invoker, wasn't yeah. it? You, you get the poor man's, you, you have the illusions out, and Invoker can't deal with, with the illusions in the early stages of the game. Yeah. But uh, uh, we'll see, see what Na'Vi do, do in terms of alterations, but at the moment, keeping them down here. They'll now know what the plan is for Liquid, as Liquid reveal themselves, coming across here to look to secure uh, the room from Na'Vi. Uh, they will be able to, and I believe already Na'Vi are making moves. Nagasar and Pycat heading straight up to the top lane. Uh, they're gonna, they are going to just go around and uh, switch up the side lanes, by the looks of it. Yeah, kind of to be expected. Yeah. So Nico had his gold saved, so he just had tangos to start, just waiting to see any information, and he does go for boots. He had the Iron Talon, and actually his quick buy, so he was like, okay, if they don't go aggro, I'm just going to straight up jungle, but since they are, I'm going to switch it up. Kuro, in position for a courier snipe. Courier is walking out this... It could, is he going to get this? Oh, it's, it's going long. Oh, oh that's he knows, smart. He knows something's up. Oh, oh no, oh. he's coming. Oh. They are keeping it on the very edge, though. Yeah, we'll see if he gets on the way back. He's going to go for it. Is, yeah. I'm, I'm keeping eyes on it. Oh, he's going go. to get it, I think. Is this just going to go straight down the middle? They're going to keep it up. Oh, he's going to get again. it. Yeah, they've got it. Kuro comes in, and easy carrier, easy life, and the taunt as well. Beautifully done there by Kuroki. And uh, certainly... My control top. Little issue. They actually get him. Okay. So they may have lost their courier, but they secure Pie Cat first blood here on the Naga Siren. Brilliant way for him to start the lane. The the lane switch up already favoring Navi. Yeah, my control not really expecting that much damage to come out from mm -hmm. the three of them. He has like the poor man's shield to start on the Doom, but yeah, just too much damage coming out from those three. Mid lane as well, Dendi, uh, despite losing the courier, uh, of course, uh, doesn't care too much at the moment as he's doing fine in, in terms of regen. He's been able to zone Miracle right back here. Uh, getting a lot of damage done to the Voker, trading hits, but now actually, well, Miracle turns back, gives him a bit of a punch with a cold snap. Kuroki's actually going to come in with the wraparound, cancels the salve, and uh, will head in. Going to see him go for uh, a kill straight away, just Dead trading around. Trouble. Now, okay, into the Sunstrike, that might just do it. It's not a huge amount of damage, but Kuroki, geez, now one more should be enough, and he'll get it. Kuro gets himself the kill onto Dendi. Suneko's coming for a bit of a punch back. Not enough damage on himself to, to really avenge... Bendy, uh, but yeah, Kuroki getting away with it. Very nice. I like that, his positioning there. Yeah. Like, Lina versus Invoker, it's it's tougher than Invoker the first few levels. It really is, we saw there, yeah. A lot of lot of pressure being put on, on Miracle. Good rotation. GH claiming bounty runes, Bristle back in the 1v1. And look at up top. For Biver. Kuroki is making the action happen. Oh, nicely done as well. Mind control, he had the satire blast inside him. Throws it out, and that'll secure themselves another one there. Kuroki already so with the courier. Uh, okay, and the courier just sitting there in the tree line. They'll go for a sun strike. Isn't going to connect. And Suneko with his haste rune. Does he get out scot free? Looks like he does. No one there to catch him out. So already a lot of, lot of action happening here in this game. As uh, movements from the map, both Suneko and Kuroki for their respective teams going pretty, pretty ham in these first couple of minutes. I can't believe both couriers dying already. <laughs> Top lane, high cap, grab back here by Kuroki. Now we're going to see my control try and look for the chase down, bringing him down low with the blast, clears out the illusions. Won't get the kill, but Force is in back. High cap has the salve ready. Matu's doing very well on this off lane. Yeah. Just because of the the mana nerfs and stuff to Dark Sarah, even though he does have a magic stick, it's, you know, you you're, you can't really sustain too well. Every single time you walk up, you get you get hit by some calls, and he's going to be forcing the lane into you over and over again, which is the opposite of what a Darkseer wants. Darkseer wants to be forcing the lanes into oh, you. Look at the Miracle mid. Dendi, yeah, bringing him down Almost. very nicely. Uh, did get eclipsed in with the light strike. Top oh, lane now. Get a lot of punches through. Shouldn't have enough damage here with the Scorched Earth coming out. They're yeah. going to try to turn for Biver here. See down bottom, Matuma's actually getting uh, aggressive onto General. General out of mana. Matuma man starting to stack up the Quill Sprays on this Darkseer. He's just got enough for the Surge out. And it looks like that will save him unless the Sun Strike connects. No. Gonna be off the point. Won't find the connection there, so. Arcs here not to fall, but we'll be forced back to base. Top lane trying to keep this pressure on Na'Vi. They are securing farm for Pycat. Not quite as much as you mentioned as Matumba Man is getting, but it is still there. It's crazy how it's seven it's a seventeen hundred gold advantage for Liquid already. <laughs> that's like even though it looks like they're doing pretty well with the yeah, that's two true. Lanes, that, that is I guess the the kills and such. The, the, the supports, it? yeah, the yeah. two supports on the side of Liquid are just getting a lot more out of the lanes yeah. right now. Right, Kuroki on uh, nearly the same amount of value as uh, Dendi at the moment. Yeah. Because of those two kills he's managed to get himself involved in with some nice plays. Very peculiar to have that sort of lead at this stage when, indeed, it doesn't feel like the, the game is too offset in terms of who's coming out of these first two minutes. As uh, Na'Vi still 
finding farm in the lanes. Seneca looking to get aggressive mid. Stun off the mark from Dendi. Should be just fine. And GH river. was there with the rotation as well, just in case Na'Vi got too heavy-handed with their attempt onto Miracle. Top lane, Viva. Actually caught out here. It's Cro okay, that's his, that's his third here. Killing spree now for the Rubik. Thinking about looking towards Pycat as well. I mean, they, this Rubik already causing a lot of issues. Kuroki just outplaying Na'Vi with, with these sort of bursts that they're not expecting in the last minute. That Seder creep for my control that, is super yeah. important in this game so far. Absolutely. Matu bottom lane. Yeah, they're trying to go in on him, but he's just hit back incredibly hard with the Quill Spray. One more stack, and that's going to be a, a dead Night Stalk. He'll pop the Sal. That will save him for the time being. Sunstrike won't connect. One more Quill Spray will kill him. Oh, just out of range of that one. GH getting Matu General as well. General very low. This oh. is double chase going on. 1v1, mate. And uh, GH will be punched down there by the little purple ball. And looks like Seneca actually managed to get himself out. That was that was incredibly very good close. Salve usage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Sal saving him for sure there between the stacks. Having Kuroki with such early mana boots in yeah. this uh, this dual lane with my control is actually really important. My control also picks up his own arcane boots, so they have like infinite sustain and spam to just take down Viver and Pycat. Pycat's still doing decent in farm, but I think we might see him start to want to rotate away from there pretty soon, just because they're going to really be able to push them out with these, this amount of spam. But where does he go though? Because bottom is also extremely pressured. Yeah, mid lane is uh, uh, worth knowing as well. Dendi still uh, very much winning in terms of CS. And in fact, they're looking to dive here onto Miracle. He'll turn around with the cold snap and the sun strike. Does connect onto Dendi, but he turns. Dragon slaves, bringing Miracle down low. Seneco's going to look to dive. Chase down for the kill. Has the vision. One more mana void, but again, the infused raindrops. Saving Miracle's life and pop down the ice wall. And in oh fact, he's going to get himself away. And he might just turn and try and pick up the kill. And he does straight away. With the right click to the face, Miracle surviving. Uh, infused Raindrop certainly paying its worth there in the middle lane for the Invoker. Yeah, the only Vo Night Stalker only being level 2 right there. The low yep. damage mana voids and then, yeah, like you said, the Raindrop absorbing it. Miracle is actually one of the better players that I've noticed at saving his stick charges. Like those okay. wand charges for the perfect opportunity. So that was really sick. Little turnaround, little jukes, sidesteps as well. Very chaotic early game here. Matuma man, straight up with the uh, the brown boots into the hood. So already, you're now looking at, at, at this bristle, and we kind of mentioned in this draft how are you going to kill him at this stage? It's already like how are you going to kill him? This early game damage that Navi have is is going to be pretty much all but useless against the bristle now. Yeah, I mean they don't they actually don't really have like any physical. Yeah. They're pretty much all in on magical damage until like. Yeah, I mean, even then, it looks like Lina isn't ever going to have really physical damage until like super late in this game. Yeah. So Sunstrike coming oh, up for General. Oh, not going to find the connection. Was hoping the General would look to duck into the tree line and dodge it. But uh, General with the uh, double bluff just right click straight down the lane back to base. And we do see that lane adjustment coming out. Yeah. Pycat makes his way toward bottom. General goes top, but instantly General forced out of lane from that massive amount of burst. They just have so much with the shockwave with the fade ball coming from Kuroki and those double arcane boots. Seneca back in the middle, burning through the uh, infused raindrop charges as Miracle has now now lost all five of the charges. Let's see if he does maybe even opt to pick up another one. It's very, very good this game. Yeah. Uh, especially when he's uh, still looking to lane and, and finish off his Midas, of course, at this, this portion of the game. Yeah, he's recognizing though also that Dendi is in the jungle. They have they yeah. have very deep wards coming out from Lick already, which I really like GH's placement yeah. of them. Because they're trying to give Seneco the lane. So that's, that's really good uh, and clever uh, placement for those from GH. They're going for their first smoke here from Navi. They might be able to find GH here. Wouldn't it be the biggest kill? Be something. Ideally. Even if uh, even if these two finally invoke on the Bristol, it's still not going to be a, a very easy kill for them. If they come towards this mid lane, it's going to be a death trap. Liquid themselves, smoking up. Kuroki, GH Hamatuma man. Dendi will have the high ground advantage, but he's just out of range of the smoke, so he's still unaware of the presence of Liquid. His own smoke has worn out now, and Liquid now have a very good wraparound. Dendi is in a whole lot of trouble, reveals himself in the mid, straight up with the cold snap, the wraparound for Liquid, an incredibly easy execution as they take down the Lina and will now be able to get a good amount of pressure uh, onto this tier one in the middle lane. Yeah, nice rotation, good read of the map. You know, like we were talking about, the, the deep wards that they have allow them to kind of read the movements coming out from Navi and they were able to respond. They even cleared some nice stacks that they had going for Matu. So yeah. if you look, he's almost level 10 already yeah, on this, this bristle look, look at the net worth as well. 5k, rocketing ahead. And we can see just behind tier ones, he knows that he can do this. There's just no way that they can slow down this bristle, or even tickle him. He'll turn, gets the kill onto the Night Stalker. 
Knocking Suneko out and down. In the mid lane, they will get a good kill in return, Navi. The Laguna Blade used to burst down Miracle. Matua Man just banning up again. Viva tries to come in. But uh, he's just a couple of quill sprays. He's out and down. Navi do find Kuroki, so they keep the trade even. Two for two still at this moment. Doom bottom. bottom lane. I mean, he'll drop the Doom. Unlikely to, to get the kill though on his own. If he's able to get the Infernal uh, Blade got the hit, it's going to be close. I, has he got the status? He's, he's fairly yeah, on the mana, isn't he? It's going to be tough now. Oh, nice oh, little sidestep. Oh, yeah. The Dukes may have just saved his life. Yeah, you're right. That, that Doom uh, plus the Scorch Surf certainly doing more damage than I, I did expect. As Pycat is brought down very low. Roki. Let's spot out Dendi. Not quite level 6 yet, Kuro. Very close, though. So we should keep, a, keep an eye out for those Rubik plays. I think Matu diving a little bit. There. I mean, I think it's okay for him to like go for one of them, but I think diving so far, you want to be able to claim the objective. And yeah. your supports can't really follow you that far. I mean, that was the problem so there, really, because the they, were, they were kind of behind him wanting to help, but yeah. they themselves obviously can cannot do nearly as as much as, as aggressive players as Matu. The Matu Man wants to at this stage. Yeah, it's still okay, but it's like, mm. you know, you want to be able to get you want to be able to get that tower, I'm pretty sure, from that rotation for Liquid. But they will get it soon. My control is going to be building up toward that mech. Mat Matu is absolutely huge, yeah, and really they're making is. their way toward top. Yeah, building into a bit of right click now after the uh, hood. Hood treads S and Y. As we see like that, just uh, forcing a, a big old Night Stalker out of the lane. Goes forward, a couple of quill sprays, and he has to get himself out of there. NS. GH. Just uh, playing around with General in the jungle bottom lane. Kuroki toying with Pycat. The wraparound will be there for Mind Control. Of course, no Doom. But the Telekinesis and the Sunstrike, they're going to be bringing him down low. Pycat, oh, he tried to get a song out. All the illusions. But a great bit of control and perfect timing from Miracle means there's not a chance for Pycat to react. Liquid playing extremely aggressive, as they should be. You know, yeah. with their early game heroes, as we mentioned, this is their strongest point of the well, this is one of their stronger points of the game and the, with the gold lead they have they may as well just keep it up with their aggressive wards and they are they're going for mid tower they got they claim top tower and not to clean this one very easily yeah, that's the bonus gold as well that'll be the the sign is done you know i like the, i love the like chakra way that works with uh, quails i know of course people probably know that it's like the double thing oh, but it really also good. it's not even just about the damage from the double quills but he also gets the double warpath stacks instantly so he's able That's to like true. beat down the towers a lot easier with that too so having that high stack of warpath early on is definitely very important for liquid's aggressive potential yeah, very very good combo but of course it, it is definitely one that you know, this is a game where liquid they're, they're absolutely hitting the the tempo and the pace that they they need to with this lineup Say we do go kind of yeah, 60 minutes down the line, then then you, you bristle that, that the whole kind of thing is going to be falling off a little bit. Uh, but that's a long way that Navi need to draw this game out to, and uh, at the moment certainly struggling a little bit with uh, this bristle getting very far ahead of the uh, the respective cause on Navi's side. And to my man, rocking this game, and uh, Liquid showing no signs of stopping the push. It's down to bottom lane, forcing out the tier two. Mind control, pretty much just keeping this out for the whole game. I mean, it's been incredibly effective as we saw in lane, and now just with the pushes, having that regen aura and just being able to nuke down the waves like that with the blast. Yeah, the shockwave is. I mean, the the passive six HP regen was so useful in the lane, yeah. and even the shockwave was incredibly useful. For yeah, yeah. The early arcane boots coming out from both of them. Matu going to be able to claim another tower. Navi at least going to get a trade this time around, getting that tier one top. But yeah, they already, they already got the feel of this game. You see uh, Suneko puts on Midas in his quick buy. He's like, all right, we got to just... This is going to have to go for the late game. We already know we can't break high ground. Our heroes don't hit objectives. We don't hit buildings very well. No. And we're playing versus a Coddle and a Rubik. So it's definitely difficult for Navi in this game. That's the mech complete for mind control. So more pieces of the push coming together for Liquid. Really looking to accentuate the, the power that their lineup has over Navi's at this stage of the game. This is cool too. GH is going for an Atos on the uh, Keeper of the Light. A little oh, bit different is... from what we're used to seeing. I, was, I, I don't think I've ever seen that on a call. I mean, at least, definitely not as the, sort of the first item after the Tranquils. Yeah. They don't have crazy catch, right? They yeah. only have like the Rubik yeah. left, and they kind of like doom and chase down with like running at people. So having another type of disable like that is definitely yeah. going to be useful. Well, very very good them. against the uh, uh, Darks here, yeah. yeah. With the Surge and such. And here we have it. Give her another tier two. Liquid. Know exactly what they have to do with this draft. They just have. They're like, all right, Miracle, you just jungle, and yep. we'll take all the towers without you. Yeah, Miracle certainly, uh, certainly, he's, he's the fullback this game. If they get a few failed pushes, uh, they do still have the scaling potential with the Miracle Invoker. And uh, at the moment, on par with Dendi. Dendi, 
Doing good to keep her on the same level as Miracle. Did, of course, have that favorable start in the middle lane, but Miracle in return caught back up with the safety of the jungle. Mm. Top lane, Seneca. Was pushing in on the tier two. TP will be there from mind control. Uh, no one else to quite be there for Liquid, so Seneca will be able to walk it off. And uh, is that mind control, bro? I think, is that like, queuing up the recipe for the full out Greaves? He's very close to it. Mid lane, we are going to see Liquid making a go onto the bristle, but a quick blinding light will knock Na'Vi back. General looks for the surge away, but oh, the stolen vacuum from Kuroki. That might just be enough to buy them time to close the gap. Light strike, oh, that, that's just safe, General. At least for the time being. Again, Kuroki trying his best to trap him with this stolen kinetic field. Not quite enough. Who's carrying salves? Someone just salved Matu. I think GH maybe still had one from the laning phase. So G Matu, while he was running in after he got stunned, got salved up. That was kind of funny. But during all this, PyCat is finding opportunities to get his farm. Very close to that relic. And it yeah. goes well, yeah. just perched up in that top lane. And yeah, I, I like what Na'Vi doing in response yeah. to this. They're, they are ignoring this as a team. They're, they're, split, they're splitting the map up. As you mentioned, PyCat down bottom, Seneco up top. They know that Liquid is going to want to fight as a, at least a four-man. And uh, if they find anyone on their own in a, in a lane, it's likely to be Miracle Farming. And still not quite at the point where he's uh, an in incredible kind of solo pick-off potent threat for the side. As uh, Midas and, of course, now working into the Agonims. Yeah, I like that. I think this is like, pretty cool that they, they really forced the issue with four heroes. And they're like, you know, Miracle is an Invoker. Yeah. Invoker needs levels. He needs to just kind of sit on his own and do this kind of thing. So it's a really good approach from them. Matu getting some goose stacks onto Dandy. Dandy just TPs it. So close there uh, to Kuroki potentially getting the vacuum, but couldn't quite get himself in range. But yeah, as you mentioned, PyCat hitting that first hurdle at uh, all things considered, pretty good timing. Yeah, 16 uh, very, minutes. Very good timing, in fact, yeah. yeah. Pretty damn good with the Arcane Boots range drop. Yeah. And especially when he was just being kind of ran at and they had to switch lanes up a bunch. Matu finishing the SNY, mind control with the Guardian Greaves, with an Alpha Wolf now eaten, so okay. he's able to now, this is going to be a much easier chance for Roshan yeah, for them. perfect aura for the Roshan. And uh, can Na'Vi do anything about this? I mean, with three members down bottom, it looks like they're, they're not going to have a chance. I mean, PyCat does have the song. He is uh, hanging around in the middle lane, but it would be uh, potentially a, a bit of a suicidal play for him. Yeah, I think Seneco was actually the one he... Executive executive yeah. decision was kind of made. He scanned... They scanned the Roche pit. They're aware that that's happening, and then they went for the power push. But now, looks like they're trying to contest. Do they have the nice. sleep up? It's going to be a little too late, though. Roshan is already going to go down. The Aegis will be claimed by Matumba. Now, I'll be thinking about this, but uh, yeah, unlikely to want to jump in after the Aegis has already gone. Yeah, I mean, Matumba Man now with this Aegis, definitely uh, the, the potential for Liquid to go for those last two remaining Tier 2s, especially with the Rod of Atos also finished up now on GH. They've got the catch. Anyone that comes to the towers, the Matumba Man will be allowed to get in close and really stack up the Quill Sprays. Top, General with the Surge away. Matumba Man again held back by Dendi with the Light Strike. So I think this is like, important to kind of point out. It's not like super crucial for this game. Actually, I'll wait till after Matu kind of just dives in, but... Uh, the fact that Liquid puts a, a ward in their own jungle, it's yeah. just like pointing out that they're like, all right, we're aware that Navi's going to be like kind of looking for potential to get on the Naga to farm around in there. So rather than just having aggressive wards, putting one of those wards in your jungle lets you know where that Naga Siren's going to be. Interesting play here for Navi. They're, they're actually smoking up and uh, make the move into the jungle. They want to find it Miracle. They know that Miracle's hanging back, just farming the jungle camps. Uh, but the wraparound will be in fact there for GH. The smoke is dispelled. by and Denny are looking to still move forward, try their luck. And they'll, they'll, they'll get eyes on Miracle, immediately dropping the Static Storm, but he's able to walk out, will be clicked back in, no, it doesn't catch it. So he'll be fine. This move in here from Dendi and Biver, ending up being a failure. The stolen Laguna Blade there from Kuroki as he bursts down Dendi. The Sunstrike from Miracle to punish this play from Na'Vi. Biver's not even going to get out as well as Miracle lands the Tornado, and they'll take down both of them. A, a very risky play there from Na'Vi, sending the two of them on a hunt for Miracle, and it does not pay off. And at the same time, on the top lane, Matuma Man may even find himself Seneco. He's manning up. One more Squirrel Spray is going to do it. Dendi comes in with the Light Strike, but already with the back turn, Matuma Man knows he's, a, he's absolutely safe. And that last minute of play, just a complete shambles from Na'Vi. He's, he's hitting so hard, too, with the Warpath yeah. Aura and the uh, Pack Leader Aura as well. Matu just playing his own game right there while his teammates save Miracle. We've got the first Rod of Atos pick up on a Keep of the Light in 7.00 onwards. Puppy wants to do in 6.88. There we go. Top lane, Doom into the Sunstrike. 
That's going to be Dendi out and down for 20 seconds. This game really amping up the, the speed that Liquid are able to play. They do manage to pop the Aegis though, Na'Vi. To my man. Back up, of course. Quickly and ready to again. They found the Tier 2s. All Tier 2s now down from the side of Na'Vi's map. Pycat has hit the Radiance, but he has got a lot of carrying on his back to do here. He has got to, he's got to prolong this one for Na'Vi. Get those lanes pushed out. And uh, Liquid at the moment with a, a nearing a 13,000 gold lead. Very much in the position to, to try and push this game over the end, over the edge and, and get that victory early on. Yeah, they want to stall it out, right? But yep. now my control is like, I know you want to stall it. I'm he's, buying he's getting, getting 20 up. minute Midas yep. on Doom after Guardian Greaves. Any second now, and there we go, he's got it delivered. Yeah. I mean, the, the real test is going to be to see if Liquid can break the high ground. As uh, Na'Vi have got very good ways to hold it, that you've got the song for the setup, you do yeah. have that combo. Again, the question is if you're actually going to be uh, able to have the damage to bring down some of these tankier heroes uh, throughout the duration of the Static Storm. Because I feel like pretty much all the time that Doom's going to be able to get the Greaves off. Uh, you're going to see uh, Matuma Man easily able to pop the hood. Yeah, I and then once that's done, are you, are you really killing them as Na'Vi at this point? It's going to be tough. Yeah. It definitely is going to be tough. And Matu is also going toward that heart build-up, so he just wants to be able to brute force the tower oh, mid lane. Oh, look at this in the middle here. Just the setup straight away. Kroki getting another usage out with the Laguna Blade. Then we'll get the Vacuum Wall onto three, but again, it just doesn't matter. There's no damage there. Crow walks himself out. General gets taken down by Matumba Man. You'll see an attempt being made here by Seneca to chase down, but Kroki was able to turn around, catch him out with the stun. It's Atos doing work. And this... This game may be borderline over unless Na'Vi can do something phenomenal, but I don't know how, how much more phenomenal you can get than that, a three-man vacuum wall static storm combo that just doesn't do enough. Something that we're worried about from the draft onwards has, has just really come into play here. Pycat will sing, but it, it, it may be his last song as, what are you going to do after the light strike timing? Wasn't even there. Miracle and GH able to walk it off. Liquid just hammering down onto the middle racks. And, I mean, this has been a... Oh, he gets the combo. Fiber. It's been a tough one, and Matuma Man's going to make sure it's going to be even tougher for Na'Vi as they charge straight in onto Pycat with the Doom and the Quill Spray stacks building up. General getting caused now, but he can't even surge out of there. Gen GH with the Rod of Atos holding him back. They do lose Matumba. Na'Vi actually able to kill the Bristleback. It, it cost them three lives, but they do actually bring Matumba Man down. And, of course, the racks are gone. It's a costly fight for Na'Vi. And still, they remain on the back foot. Dendi down the four Bloodstone charges. It's almost a 20k gold lead for Liquid. It's it's just so hard for Na'Vi this game. And it, it felt like it has been pretty much from minute minute zero. Yeah, they have all this like AoE magic damage. Yeah. So it's like it's so hard to bring down this frontline Bristleback who just runs in at you with the Hood of Defiance. They end up, like you said, they end up getting him. But yeah, everybody else is very healthy. And now they're starting to build up more and more... More and more items, just feeling very good. GH even going to be going toward like a Lotus Orb instead of going for that Aghanims. I think this is a kind of an interesting uh, like approach versus the Night Stalker okay. rather than going yeah. for Ags. Because, you, you know, they picked the Night Stalker for the Vision game, so he's going for like these, this completely different item build. Even though, you, I like that, yeah. even though like having the heal would be nice and stuff when they can siege, they want to change the build up top lane. Navi getting aggressive, looking for Miracle. Oh, this would be a perfect pick if they can get away with it. We'll see how Miracle can deal with it. Straight up with the Void and the Silence. Miracle. Yeah, he should be in trouble. They've got a Static Storm as well, if they wish to use so, and they'll take it. They don't need the Static, they've got enough damage. Big kill for Na'Vi. Miracle down for 50 seconds. And of course, we, as we've been saying, you know, with the sort of lineup the Liquid are running, any sort of kind of slowdown to the pace that they've got is, it is, it is a big issue for Liquid. Na'Vi now in a position to push up on the top lane. They've got to be wary of, of letting Na'Vi kind of climb back into the game with, with big kills like that one. Yeah, just li Liquid splitting up for a moment and Navi capitalizing it on mm. it. But now they're they're grouping up again. They've got recall in about 29 seconds, so when Miracle's up, they will be able to bring him down here if he wants to. And the siege continues. Yep, there we go. No Miracle for 10 seconds, but as you said, GH yeah, will be quickly able to drag him down. General is having to stand this place there with a mana leak upon him. Matsuma Man now ready to go to the high ground. Get a bit of damage done to this Tier 3. Miracle, first of all, will push up on the top lane. And there we go, actually. Interesting fact about the Bristle, the, the third worst hero in terms of overall, overall ELO shift. So, 
kind of surprised me. I feel like it, it doesn't always strike me as the most least successful, but I could definitely see it's a hero that, that can be game losing. If, if you don't win in what, say, the, the 30, 40 minute mark, it just becomes exponentially harder, especially if it's a carry bristle. Yeah, he just uh, he really starts to fall off yeah. in, in the later stages of the game. It could be a silver edge pickups or just like his the, the ability that you can have to just like, kite him around. He just yeah. can't really get in close to the gap. And overall, just well, armor scaling, get it, building yeah. up armor. He's got his heart now, though, Matumba. He is a big old bristle. 25 minutes in, very impressive amount of farm for him to have. Hood's now picked up. For mind control, so also Miracle himself. Top. Enemy tanky. Actually, oh, getting the blink out after the sleep there. Looks like they didn't have to cancel or any sort of catch to punish him. And bottom lane, here comes the diving in. Matuma Man already taking down the disruptor. The shrine heal, not enough to save Dendi. And they'll power in to this bottom tower here. Two members down on Na'Vi. Let's we'll see what they can Ooh, do. Man. They'll pop the fortification. They do have the uh, vacuum wall combo, but almost certainly going to want to wait for the Disruptor to be there for the follow-up. This Again. is where Bristol's at his absolute yeah. peak, too. He's got the heart. He's level massive. 18, so he can get the 9 stacks if he's able to spam properly with Goo for that plus damage to be able to just take out the buildings. And yeah, they're just full-out objective taking at this point. There we go. There's the combo. Four-man vacuum wall into the static storm. But uh, are they taking any damage? It doesn't look like they are. For look at Matuma, man. He does not care uh, what they throw at him. They just turn, bring down General Na'Vi, running themselves back to the fountain as Liquid are just taking over the base here, clearing out the bottom lane of Rax. And uh, this point, Matuma Man's just ready to play around with Na'Vi, and Na'Vi will tap out. They've had enough. It's all too much here in this first game of the day for them. 26 minutes in, Liquid with Matu a very just with his back win. turned in the fountain. Yeah, and it's, oh and the, my the pings goodness. come out. <laughs> I mean, a brilliant game there from Matu, playing the position yeah. one Bristleback, had an absolute ball of a time. And, and Na'Vi, again, it just really feels like with their draft, they're all, always running a bit of a risk, you know, trying to, to play this position one Naga, which I believe was the, the final pick. So they yeah. knew what they were up against.